Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the Bramante Brothers channel. Today, Zach and I are gonna tackle building our dock. Our old one is in disrepair and it's time for a new one. So this is the first step. So what Zach and I are doing here is clearing a place on the lake ice. We are on the lake right now so that we can build our dock. What that's gonna do is keep us from having to launch the dock if we were to build it on the ground, uh, on the shore. So now we've got a nice level flat surface with the ice. We didn't have to dig through much snow. You can see it's about 16 inches there. We're gonna build it just like we would build a wall or any other construction on a flat like concrete and uh, tie it off to the shore. And then that way as the lake ice melts and goes out, our dock is already in the water. We just have to pull it up to where we need it and uh, attach it to where we want it and we're good to go. So this is the first step. Next, we'll bring our lumber down here and materials, uh, hardware, and then we'll start putting it together. It is dock building day. It's a gorgeous day and it's gonna be a perfect day for doing this. Let's do it. All right, I've gathered all the tools we need so that we don't have to keep making trips back and forth. But first, we need to unload the sled. There, that was easy. All right, so we have all of our boards laid out. We are running the boards this way for a particular reason. If you can imagine six barrels laid in here, one, two at that end, two in the middle on each edge, and two on this edge. Our layout running the 12 foot this way is gonna work a lot better as opposed to making it like an eight foot wall. So we've got 12 foot material going this way and two eight foot rim joists. I'm going to find some factory edges that look nice, measure out my two rim joists, and then mark layout on those two. There's gonna be some extra blocking. We got extra pieces of pressure treat wood over here that we'll use for blocking around the barrels. And we'll show you more of that detail later. Joe's got all the pieces of wood crowned and now he's ready to cut off some factory edges. All right, so we're going to attach this with a little bit uh, different hardware, some special hardware. You wanna make sure that you're doing it with some beefy stuff, especially if you're on a lake that's going to freeze. Our old dock, what happened was, is it was just put together with regular three inch wood screws, nothing fancy. And the water is up underneath the frame just a little bit and as that water freezes, it expands, and then it just pops the screws and busts them. So what we're using are these four and a half inch headlock. They have a spider drive bit, and they are pretty beefy. I think it's about a quarter inch shank on that. So we're gonna do two headlocks per joist on each end, and uh, that should stand up to the ice pretty well. Also, we made sure to pre-drill these first quarter inch drill bit drilling especially on the ends you don't want to split that out in the valleys here you're not as likely to split it out but I'm still going to pre-drill it's just going to uh, help it drive in a little bit better all right we got this all squared up good on layout and then we went back up for the load of plywood and the barrels so now we're on to stage two which I'm not sure what it is. Joe, what's stage two? Stage two is seeing uh, how the barrels fit in and you'll see that in just a minute here. And then blocking for the barrels. And then after we install the blocking for the barrels, um, we will take the barrels back out and plywood the top, screw that down nice. Then my plan is, is for Zach and I to flip this thing install the barrels on the underneath side. I'll show you the hardware we have for that and then flip it back over onto the barrels and let it set. So the way it's designed and the layout of those barrels is that they'll actually go, yep, just like that, in the second row in, giving a little more flotation to the overall width and depth, of, I don't know, width and length of the dock itself. All right, there we go. So I hate to say it, but I'm a little skeptical that those six barrels are gonna float the dock, but I hope it works. I hope it works. 
Well, hello, Princess Emma. How was your morning? Yeah, mine's about the same. Now we know our blocking is right where it needs to be. Hi, camera. Hey, we got a student here. Your uh, mama sent you out for shop class, huh? <laughs> Taking a break from school to come out and see Uncle Joe and I build the dock. It's good stuff to learn, too. All right, so one more step that Zach and I took on this, trying to think ahead. We have a few things to attach to this dock. One of them being the ramp that comes down onto the dock. And that ramp is going to have hinges to adjust with the height of the level of water, the lake water. So we did some blocking on that so that we have a good solid place to lag that ramp to. We also put some blocking on this end right here. And on the other end, for the float plane tie downs, that's what I'm going to call them. You know, the little horn on a dock that you lash the rope on. That is so we can lag that to there and it gives us a little more meat of wood to do that to. So we are ready to screw the plywood down and then we'll get on with the next step. He's helping Uncle Joe. I thought I'd have to give her a lot more training on that drill, but she got it. She's sinking them just right. Let's see. What'd you just do? Oh, look at that, look at that. Nice work. She's sinking them just right. And then Joe is going around the edge. So right here, here's the difference in our screws. We thought we'd go around the edge with the three inchers. And Chloe is taking care of the these um, two inchers. Are these two? Are these two inchers? Yeah, All right, so we got twos and threes. Now Joe's got an audience here. Mr. Bo is just loving the no the noise of the drill. Bo, do you like that drill? Do you think that sound is cool? You lost your boot, man. You and your slippery feet. Good job, kid. All right, so Chloe had her turn. Now Eileen's helping. Getting a little shop class on this nice... On this nice sunny day. And... There we go. It's coming together. How's break time over there? Me? Yeah. Push down harder with your top hand. Nice work. You got it. Good job, kid. All right, so what Joe and I did was got some uh, of this two inch webbing from the camping section of Sportsman's Warehouse. And as you can see right here in the background, boom and boom, we're gonna wrap each barrel twice. So uh, this is what? does it say 15 feet we got two packages so we got 30 feet by the time we cut each one of these to about 28 inches it was perfect amount right back in there we just kind of double wrapped it pinned it down with a nice washer and we were told to use some sort of you know plastic nylon sort of material because um, that's not going to dissolve or uh, like a plumber's tape we were thinking of using, but that could rust, that could fall apart, it could contaminate the water. So there we go. We're going to lock all these in. Got all of our webbing cut to just about 28 inches. Not an exact science, but there you go. Looks pretty good. If you guys watch our videos at all, uh, a couple months ago, we got these poly barrels from a local laundromat. Uh, they were just selling a bunch of extras. They always get them in. Uh, these had laundry detergent in them 
and they smell really good inside. So, you know, that's a bonus if you ever had to stick your nose in one, I guess. Other than that, yeah, simple to find on Craigslist or Facebook uh, or go to a local laundromat. Probably have piles of them they're trying to get rid of. All right, so hopefully not a very dangerous part of the job, but we gotta try and get this to lay back down once that first layer of barrels hits the ice, hopefully it doesn't just slide out from under us. But we'll see how it goes. You detaching that one? It's already detached. Okay, do we want to pull it toward us or do we want to stay on the outside? I don't really want to pull it on top of us, but that might be our only option. Yeah, because it's not going to go right away. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Get ready for it to cut. Nice. There we go. Now we can move it around. That is going to be a beautiful dock. That was smoother than I thought. Let's see if we can get this here. Boom, there we go. It didn't even slide out from under us when we pulled it back down, which I was pleasantly surprised with that. Um, there's a little bit of conversation on whether or not six barrels are gonna float this sucker. And if we can all safely stand on it when we're unloading a float plane and all that kind of stuff. Uh, to be honest, we don't know. We're, we're pretty confident that that is enough, but we will find out and we will let you know. Just like Joe said in that first uh, video where we actually purchased these barrels in Anchorage, he was calculating that about half of the barrel was gonna stick out and uh, looks good, looks sharp. Well guys, if you're one of our subscribers, our faithful watchers, thanks for watching. If you just happened upon this because you're looking to build your own dock, thanks for stopping by. Consider subscribing to our channel. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was informative and fun. And uh, if you guys stick around, we'll see you in the next video. Later. The Monte Brothers. <laughs> hey guys, so we're back at the dock. We've got it lifted up again. Why, you ask? I forgot a crucial element, joist hangers and L brackets, I believe these are called. I got so excited this thing went together so perfect and I forgot to put the joist hangers and the L brackets on. What this is going to do is just give us more strength and more structure to fight against the ice wanting to rip this thing apart in the winter because we're not going to take it out of the water. So I have to remove... Uh, the end barrel so that I can get these joist hangers in there. I've got the compressor and the generator and some Tico nails and a palm nailer. And I'm going to get these things in here, lick split and lay this thing back down. Then we can let it rest in the ice and the water until springtime. Thanks for watching guys.